It has been more than 15 months since the World Health Organization declared the COVID-19 outbreak a pandemic. Since then, daily life across the globe has changed with unprecedented impacts on the global economy, trade and mobility. Practically all aspects of economic and social activities are where and are still disrupted. However, Air transport has remained one of the hardest hit global industries as the economic, social and health implications uh, for the aviation sector are far reaching and the pandemic will affect aviation businesses, passengers and airports for yet, years to come. According to the latest report by the International Air Transport Association, IATA 2020 was the 2020 was the worst year ever in airline industries across the world as passengers' revenues fell by 69% to $189 billion due to the devastating effect of the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the positive growth projections for the industry in 2021, airline companies are still far from pre-pandemic profits and sales uh, some of the uh, some of the uh, profits made or some of their businesses like business travels are not even comparable to normal levels. However, the growing number of COVID-19 cases, fears of new travel restrictions due to Delta variant and concerns about the economic recovery causes a new hit to airline stocks. I introduced him earlier. He's the managing partner at Aglo Aviation Support Services Limited. Mr. Tayo Ojuri is live in the studio. Good afternoon, Mr. Ojuri. It's good to see you. Same here. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes. I'd like to start on this note. The third wave is here for real. 790 cases on Nigeria yesterday, and we've been saying same globally. What's your assessment? This looks like would affect the projections already on ground for the aviation sector. That's talking about recovery. Yes, there's no recovery in sight. Actually, uh, we actually saw that IATA forecasted recovery to be in 2024. And that is what is actually panning out as we speak. Because we actually had the burnout of about $95 billion as at half year 2021 for airlines globally. So bringing that home, we've seen those challenges with the burnout. And we, we actually forecasted to eat that to be $38 billion this year. And now half year we're seeing uh, 95 billion. So we're seeing another half year to be about 190 billion dollars for airlines burn up. That's going to lo cause a lot of challenges because there's an expectation of the fourth wave. Hmm. There, there's a challenge of uh, the uh, travel restrictions across, which you did mention. There are lots of challenges across the board. Let's bring that home. We've seen, due to the third wave, we've seen the PTF restrict four major countries that have not been able to come to Nigeria in the last, since, uh, in the last three, four months. Let's put that in perspective in monetary terms. Look at uh, the numbers between the four countries as uh, South Africa. The numbers between South Africa 2020 was 2.9 billion trade volume. Between uh, Turkey, 1.39 2019 numbers, billion trade traffic. Our trade volume between Brazil, we have 8.851 million dollars trade volume, and then India has 13.8 billion. All these countries and investors and possible partners from these countries, I want to bring money of foreign direct investment into Nigeria, have been restricted from coming into Nigeria. So that's the impact, obvious impact, not showing the other ancillary challenges we're seeing as a result of COVID-19. So just pick those four countries and see that volume of restriction and people that are not able to come in now. Nobody's able to come and do business, have one-on-one -on -one, uh, exploratory business meetings in Nigeria. Even though we've seen uh, technology advances with meetings, it's still an environment where assessment is key towards signing those dotted lines. So we see that challenge and we see the impact that's going to cause to the aviation sector because we're not seeing people travel. Over and beyond that, like you said, we've seen the fourth wave. Yeah. With the fourth wave, we've seen a countries like Myanmar, Vietnam uh, experiencing fourth wave as it is. With the fourth wave, you have lots of restrictions. And tying to that, we are at a very huge disadvantage at this time in Nigeria because of the level of vaccination. That's it. With the level of vaccination low, which is about 2% of our population, I reckon that the next, uh, we've just gotten one statch. Now we're getting, we got another statch yesterday, the Wednesday. So I believe with the statches, we're able to actually 
have lots of uh, vaccination programs, and then that would improve the opportunity for people to travel. And with that opportunity for people to travel is going to open up and uh, revitalize the aviation sector. There's been this up uh, back and forth of uh, talking about a uh, flight ban with United Arab Emirates. And it was supposed to be last week, I guess. And now we're waiting for the 15th uh, to, for transit flights and all of this. Now, what, does this, what do you make of this whole issue, the line of communications and all of that? It's, there is the, lots of factors. It's just, just no one, fa one factor. There's aero politics that plays a major part. There's the, there are challenges whereby you have lots of cult issues between Nigerians in, being ex uh, uh, promoted by Nigerians within the UAE. You have the uh, Expo 2021 coming up, and they want to make sure that all their docks are in a row to ensure there is nothing that would deter them because that's a major, um, that's a major uh, promotion exhibition for the UAE. So with all that put together, what we've seen now is lots of, lots of those that can come in are those that have travel permits rather than tourists. Now with summer as good as over, schools resume in September, and they've been able to hold their own and not let Nigerians come in since March. They, I don't think they're, uh, they're going to start in a hurry, and that we're going to see this goalpost move further, further down until we, they make sure that, one, the vaccination is according to what they want, because there's been the trust issue of those traveling across to the UAE having false um, vaccine or false PVC test. So with that test, there has to be some authentication process with the UAE which will give them that, some comfort and reassurance that those that are coming are not, uh, uh, are not going to be spreaders of COVID-19. COVID uh, I, I can imagine. Uh, back to uh, reports of infection cases. Nigeria still looks a little bit low when you look at countries like India, America, and all of that. I'm looking at how this will affect international travel forecasts uh, as we move on, and also patronage from Nigeria. Dubai still remains a place where Nigerians <laughs> go to. Yeah. The influx is on the high side. So why do you think this will affect the forecast? It's low, but let's compare apples and apples. How many people actually test in Nigeria? Hmm. If you have a pain or you have fe you're feverish or you're lethargic, you actually would not. There's that, God forbid, it's not me yeah. and um, it's not COVID. But it doesn't, it's not written on people's forehead. Uh, the cost, we, we, the previous speaker spoke, and the reality on ground is uh, it's, the economy is biting on everybody's pockets. So when we see the cost of 51,000 naira just to go test for COVID, a minimum, in, let's be real, the minimum income is $30,000. So just for you to go and test for COVID mm. for 51,000, yes, Lagos State is doing, uh, has a free option, but how many people are aware? So let's now put that against India. India has had big issues in the last few months. So that's actually made them extend their process. They've actually, uh, they produce, that's another factor. They produce the vaccines we don't produce yet. So that's a big gap for us. So they're having, one, lots of uh, testing opportunities. Two, um, well, co coincidentally, of, uh, fortunately for them, or unfortunately, the third wave increase made them actually go to uh, increase in debts and issues, made them actually, made them start testing people more and vaccinating. We're not actually having lots of those vaccinations yet in Nigeria. So all this is going to make people not travel at the moment. Hmm. Let's now go to improving testing capacity and of course airlines' ability to incorporate more safety measures at uh, this time. What do you think can be done? Uh, still looking at Delta variant, what more can the aviation industry or the, you know, all of, what can you do to, uh, you know, ease this one way or the other, let's just get it right and at least more safety in our aircraft. Aviation is leveraging on uh, global best practices. There's what we call aer aeromedical, and that's driven by ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization. Mm -hmm. It's driven by the UN. So we just uh, plug into those processes. We call it the startup process. One, obviously, uh, the two-meter um, 
meter separation, yeah, separation, the hygiene, washing your uh, hands. Yes, people uh, complain or they, they actually have that argument that you have people sitting in close proximity within in the aircraft. Yes, the aeration within the aircraft is so um, disaffected. And the way the air flows is actually helping to reduce the spread of COVID-19. So what we've done and uh, what we do continuously within the aviation from start to finish on uh, when you actually start, we get down to, bo to go to no. the airport checking in or airport passenger facilitation process is you get fumigated and uh, sorry, you get sprayed and your bags actually get sprayed uh, as well. Yeah, there's the separation, true. there's the hand sanitization or washing of your hands, and temperature then checks. temperature checks. We have all those processes. And again, what we've actually seen over now is the uh, what we call, call the travel bubble. You have safe areas, and with this travel bubble, you open those, con uh, those connections whereby people are able to tra travel, and then they improve the slope to the flow of travel. This actually helps economic growth because the reality is, yes, COVID is here, but there's the li life happens and life continues after COVID. After COVID. Uh, that's true. Uh, let's bring the conversation uh, back home. We now see new entrants into the aviation industry, uh, you know, smaller aircrafts and all of that. Do you think this would twerk uh, the dynamics of domestic travel in any way? Yes, um, it, it's actually a good, it's a destructive um, in idea because they've actually seen that one. Even before we th talk about that, we are actually having to grapple with uh, biological issues, green issues in aviation. Yeah, that's true. Aviation is considered the major culprit in uh, uh, actually uh, affecting greenhouse gases. So we see that the smaller aircrafts are fuel efficient, are actually uh, optimization of the passenger traffic. So they're able to actually connect the one hour traffic within Nigeria, most places within Nigeria, or you have connectivity from Abuja to the north. So that helps with the core travel, uh, traveling pa uh, passengers at throughput at the moment. Now, when the passenger throughput picks up, we're able to actually have what you call origin and destination, where those uh, passengers are able to fill larger aircraft and that helps with movement of the aircraft. So to, uh, to sum that up, I think the small aircrafts are efficient and fuel efficient, optimi uh, uh, good for operational efficiency as well. So it's a good uh, innovation uh, entry into Nigerians' domestic operations for now. Hmm. Now, let's, uh, we're in the second half of the year, obviously, and uh, new developments. Uh, what new developments do you think uh, would reshape the aviation sector? A lot of issues, uh, conversation around airport concessioning, airport infrastructure. We can go on and on. What are those things that you think would shape uh, the industry in Nigeria? In Nigeria, we, interestingly, Nigeria is not just the, it's we're part of the pie. Of course. So uh, we've seen lots of economy, uh, the weather. Now we're going through lots of weather concerns, and aviation is considered a major corporate. So we might be forced to have, it would be painful to the passengers, we have a, uh, a charge, a surcharge, environmental surcharge, which is actually being charged on foreign tickets. Mm -hmm. But on domestic tickets, we don't have that yet. So that's one, uh, that could be a disruptor in the price of tickets. Mm -hmm. But it's really a concern of what are we doing how many trees are we planting to offset the carbon uh, 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 outflow from aviation? That's going to be... Then, interesting, you say in Nigeria, we'll have lots of what you call uh, virtual takeoff and landing. We're saying it, it's all about what has been optimized and what has been shown in um, Dubai and even Europe now. But we're going to see lots of that in Nigeria. Um, drone technology is going yeah. to come forefront. Yeah. Uh, because of movements, and then um, for for uh, Nigerians, we're going. To, the economy insecurity is driving lots of people to aviation travel or uh, uh, air travel. So with that, we're going to see lots of traveling by air. That is my uh, opinion for the next um, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter of um, 2021. What are the challenges we face as we wrap up? I heard you talking about a liter of aviation for selling for as much as how much? 300, approximately 300 naira per liter. Is it that, available? It is available, but at 300, 300 liter and the, the high rate, exchange rate of the dollar, that is a showstopper for us. 
where we don't have preferential or the preferential rates that aviation has is not funded. So we're not able to meet the operations, which is about 90% or 80% dollarized. Mm -hmm. So with the dollar rates at uh, what it is now, we're, able to, we're not able to uh, afford to buy dollar to be able for training, for maintenance, for spares, even the importation of aviation fuel is linked to the dollar. So we're at the uh, short, we're holding the short end of the stick, <laughs> uh, but obviously we still have to fly, and uh, there's a limit to which aviation can re uh, increase the pr uh, passenger tickets, which actually, I think that'll be a, uh, a discussion for another time, is there, are the price tickets actually realistic? realistic. Is that a reflection of the cost of True. operations within True. aviation? True, I think that that's gonna be a topic for for another time. But it, it, it's really interesting getting to understand uh, all of this. I must thank you uh, for your time. It's always interesting having you in the studio. Managing partner, Aglo Aviation Support Services Limited, Mr. Tayo Juri speaking. Uh, regards to the aviation industry and the third wave of COVID-19 and other issues uh, rising from that sector. Thank you very much for spending your afternoon with us. We really appreciate this. It's always a pleasure. All right, then.